Hi, thank you for joining us in another episode of Drinking an Angry Badass Woman of History. Because it's Cinco de Mayo, we thought it would be important to feature some Mexican history today. My name is Lark, and today we'll be making the Cadillac Margarita, and we'll be featuring Emilia Galindo Acosta as our badass angry feminist as part of the Mexican Revolution. So let's get started with our drink. You're gonna need some tequila, prefer an anejo. You're gonna need some triple sec. You're gonna need some Grand Marnier. You're gonna need some sweet and sour, a lime, some salt or some sugar if that's your preference, and some ice. So making the Cadillac Margarita, which is the mother of all margaritas, it's very full body, not unlike myself, it's important to have the best top shelf ingredients. So with your shaker, put it right there. Go ahead and take your lime. I'm just gonna rim that glass with it. Nice. And my family doesn't prefer the salt, they prefer the sugar. So I've lined my wax paper with sugar. And you can find some little fancy things that have that that you can get the sugar or the salt with. So go ahead and line that. Okay, that's the end result. Go ahead and put some ice in this. Ice in your glass. All right, let's get the drinking started. So go big or go home. You got this big bottle from Costco. You need an ounce and a half of tequila. Three quarters of an ounce of triple sec. And then it calls for about three ounces of sweet and sour. I prefer the pre-mixed already margarita sweet and sour with a little bit of tequila from Costco. Gives them me that little extra punch, but it's up to you. You can do as much or as little as you like. So I fill that on up. All right, top it and shake. Okay, so pour that right on in. And then for that wonderful added extra flavor, just a little bit of the Grand Marnier, put in as a floater. All right, sip and enjoy. Hi, welcome back. Just a note, uh, we drink before these episodes. We are drinking during and we'll probably be drinking after. So, viva la Cinco de Mayo. All right, so I have Sadiq and Viani here to help me discuss this important part of Mexican history and our media. So we're gonna start with a little bit of history about Cinco de Mayo. Sadiq? So Cinco de Mayo, or the 5th of May, what it translates into, is the celebration of a day that the Mexican army won a battle over the French army. Um, this happened at the Battle of Puebla during the French-Mexican War. Um, now this day is often thought of as being the uh, Mexican Independence Day, but that's not true at all. It's actually a, a celebration of this particular day and France, Napoleon, he thought that, hey, we can go in, we can go to uh, Puebla, and uh, this should be an, an easy victory. However, the local Mexican army, which was comprised of primarily um, indigenous Mexican people, they prepared for their arrival. They prepared, they fortified their city, it was a small city, and they were able to win this glorious battle. So the total... Uh, the uh, fatalities on each side was about 500 French compared to 100 Mexican, which was pretty significant compared, considering how much they were outnumbered. Um, but this battle represented a significant and symbolic victory, which uh, for the Mexican government and bolstered the resistance, um, the resistance movement. So now that we have a better understanding of what Cinco de Mayo is, now we're going to go ahead and talk about our angry badass woman of history, and let's go on to you, Lark. All right. So Emilia was born on June 2nd, 1886 in Villa Lerdo in Mexico. She was sent away at a very young age uh, to Chihuahua to study. 
She learned accounting, she learned typing, she became fluent in both English and Spanish. While she was away at school, her mother passed away. She was very young, and she continued to be raised by her father. But at the age of 14, her father also passed away. It dashed her hopes uh, where she was planning to go to the United States to study chemistry. But it also revolved into what we know is the beginning of her becoming an angry badass woman of history. So at the age of 15, she moves to Mexico City to take care of her aunt. And this is where she starts to really get into politics. She joins an underground liberal group called, um, called the Abraham Gonzalez Liberal Group. And they start to take new life um, during the collapse of the Dia system. So to get some context, Sadiq, would you mind giving us a brief synopsis on what the uh, DS system is? Sure. Yeah, so the DS system was a uh, system that was put into place and named after uh, President, uh, Mexican President, President Diaz. Um, he modernized and, uh, um, he modernized Mexico's economy and their uh, industry by using foreign funds to pay for the rail system that's in Mexico. By doing so, he was able to uh, heighten the uh, export of Mexican goods, and during this time, banks were able to flourish. Um, it was during this era in which uh, Armelia was born. Yeah, so during this collapse, Armelia gets more and more into politics, um, and she starts to translate speeches and moves on to creating and performing her own speeches. Uh, her, she catches the eye of the revolutionary leaders who hire her to assist on propaganda. And this is when she starts to notice that women are, no, are not treated equally. And this is what feels her to be the badass feminist we know. So there's a law of codes in 1884 that says that women have the same equal rights as men. However, it's you know, supposedly single women. Clearly, Amelia knows this is not true, but what angers her the most is the fact that it pertains to married women. Married women have virtually no rights. Uh, married women, whether they have inherited land or have property or money, it all goes to their husband. Their husband can freely choose to do good or bad with whatever the wife has. It's so crazy that the wife cannot even have any kind of say in her children's education, let alone be able to have her children. And what makes it worse is that these widows, if a woman is to be widowed, if she doesn't consult with whoever the husband chooses beforehand, somebody else has the right to her property and also her children. So this incites her uh, to, to want to change the laws. In September of 1915, Amelia and a couple other feminists um, found the publication La Mujer Moderna, which in other words is the modern woman. It lasts, in about to, it lasts until about 1919, uh, which is the same lifespan as the very first uh, women's journal in Mexico that was named La Mujer uh, Mexicana, which appeared between 1904 and 1908. Now, during this time, being a feminist and fighting for women's rights was difficult and oftentimes very dangerous, uh, but Amelia did not care. She continued to fight for women's rights and even laid the foundation for women, Mexican women to vote, which, and during this time, women were not, conceived as, were not seen as full citizens and were even unable to vote or run for office. So in January of 1916, when Ermina was opposed to the imbecilitas sexus, or um, women being described as an imbecile by way of her sex, she decided to give a fiery speech at the Feminist Congress Women's Movement. Uh, and in this speech, she talks about a woman's right to choose. She also discusses, at that time, um, for the women that were poor, the right to good hygiene, teaching about birth control, uh, teaching about a woman's right to have sexual desires, also the right to choose a husband that wasn't chosen by their parents. She coined the term back in that time of free love uh, so that a woman would have the right to choose a husband. And not only that, the right to have a divorce, which was frowned upon, obviously, by the Catholic Church. Another important part is that she wanted to take away the stigma of having a child out of wedlock. and that women shouldn't have just no thought or no choice. And so this brought up fiery speeches, and not only that, 
um, when she gave the speech, it roared across the movement, but also brought a lot of anger because of the things her speech was saying. Did you know that she was a product of her mother's affair with the man then? I didn't. Yeah. So many say that Galindo's push for sexual education and free love come from her understanding of her Ill illegitimacy and how and how it was perceived in um, contemporary Mexico. Interesting. So it's pretty interesting when you think about how revolutionary her thoughts actually were. It was at that time. Um, the Mexican government passed a constitution in February of 1917 that said that women didn't have the right to vote or even participate in the political system at all. So maybe you can fill us in, Lark, on what that meant for her political career. Well, first of all, with that law, that meant she had no political career. And Emila was not one to just take that line down. She said that at that point in time, she was going to run. And she did. She was the first woman in Mexico to ever run for a political position. And she won with overwhelming votes. However, uh, the Mexican government decided not to count it. They said she didn't have a right to run. They wouldn't, count her, they wouldn't count her positions. And so she countered and she said, listen, I'm not running to win. I'm running to create a path forward for women. That's how revolutionary she was. Um, she was extremely forward thinking. And I think it's important to note that these are tumultuous times in modern history at this time in Mexico. And not only did she start at the young age of 15, she retired at the young age of 24. She was an editor, she was a published journalist, she gave many speeches, she was an incredible woman. It's sad to note that the male chauvinism that won and continued to not just oppress, but Guelph women's rights and freedoms, um, you know, in, in, in the women's movement, um, you know, Mexican women didn't actually receive the right to vote until, or, or political equality until 1958. Wow. So that's, you know, that's 41 years later. You know, and that's why Emilia Ganindo Acosta is considered one of a revolutionary feminist who was able to usher in a new modern equal Mexico. Um, and that's why she's our badass feminist of today. Wow, she's amazing. Viva la mujer. Viva, Viva la, la mujer. mujer. Thank you so much for joining us in Drinking and Angry Badass Women of History. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like, share, and subscribe to our post. If you have any women you'd like us to feature, we only want angry badass women like us to feature in history, please let us know. Drop it in the comments. Um, also, we will put the recipe for the drink in there. And if you have any drinks you'd like us to make, please let us know. We're here to please you. So, thank you, and we appreciate you guys watching. Adios. Adios. Adios.